The Omaha 2 Report by Michael Richardson The Omaha 2 are Black Panther leaders Ed Poindexter and Mondawi Longa, formerly David Rice. Both men are imprisoned in the Nebraska State Penitentiary, serving life sentences for the 1970 bombing murder of Omaha police officer Larry Menard. Officer Menard was killed in a vacant house when he was lured by a 9-11 caller with a report of a woman screaming. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover entered the case and offered to help find Menard's killer, but instead issued an order squelching a lab report on the identity of the 9-11 caller. Ivan Conrad, the director of the crime lab, called Hoover to verify that Hoover actually wanted to let the killer of a policeman get away with murder. On August 19th, the day before Menard was buried, Hoover confirmed his order. Omaha attorney Tim Ashford explains. Withheld the FBI, the mighty FBI, withheld a memo uh, regarding a 9-11 tape. The 9-11 tape was supposed to be, have been made by Dwayne Peake. And Dwayne Peake was supposed to have made a call to summon Officer Menard to the location I believe it was 2869 Ohio Street. And as a little boy, I lived right down the street from there on Ohio. But his voice was supposed to be the voice on the tape, a 16-year-old, 15, 16-year-old child. When you hear that tape, it's the voice of a grown man. Now, in 1970, everyone knows we do not have the same technology we have in 2006, 2007, 2008. Thomas Owens on the Poindexter appeal, which is currently pending, did a voice exemplar, a voice analysis of it. This expert, Owings, has been used by the government. He also, I believe, um, he analyzed the voice tape of Osama bin Laden. Uh, and this person concluded, based upon the tape and the voice of Dwayne Peake, based upon the technology we have now, that the voice on that 9-11 tape, which was not given to uh, the defense in the trial, the voice on a 9-11 tape is not that of Dwayne P. Fearful that the FBI crime lab would still issue a report, Acting Chief of Police Glenn Gates and Paul Young, Omaha FBI Special Agent in Charge, sent another memo making it very clear that they wanted no use of the tape because it might be prejudicial to the police case. Larry Menard, betrayed first by J. Edgar Hoover and then his own acting chief of police, Glenn Gates, was buried on his 30th birthday. Ed Poindexter and Mondo Ilanga, convicted of Menard's murder, remain in prison. For Menard's killer, the 9-11 caller, remains unidentified and at large.